Journalists in Cameroon say attacks on reporters have surged as the country prepares for next year's elections. 91-year-old President Paul Bia, who has ruled for over four decades, may run again. Rights groups say six journalists have been assaulted by government in the past three weeks, while several reporters and a radio station have been ordered to stop broadcasting. Muki Edwin Kinzeka reports from Yaoundé. The network of Cameroon media owners, or a PAC, says four of its members have been brutally attacked by men armed with rifles and machetes in Cameroon's capital, Yaoundé, in the last three weeks. Emmanuel Ekuli, publisher of the weekly newspaper La Voix du Centre and Cameroon correspondent of Reporters Without Borders, was attacked by armed men in front of his home last week, according to Repac. Ekuli told VOA he was stabbed several times and that his telephone, recording equipment and laptop were taken. Repac said that last week, Armed men also tried to abduct its president, François Mboke, the publisher of the newspaper De Apazon, but his neighbors raised an alarm and the armed men escaped. Xavier Messi, publisher of Le Calam newspaper and Arsène Conda, publisher of the Identities newspaper, were also attacked by men with machetes this month. Besides the physical attacks on journalists, Cameroon media professionals say they are increasingly being silenced as Cameroon prepares for next year's presidential elections. 91-year-old President Paul Bia, who has ruled for over four decades, has not said whether he will run in the October polls, but his supporters have called for Bia to be a candidate. Council President Joseph Chebonken Kalabubse denies allegations the government is using the council to silence journalists. However, he says some journalists need a refresher course on ethics. In the days ahead, we will deploy council members to organize workshops and seminars to be able to sensitize and educate our peers on what is at stake and the expectations from them. Chebon Keng spoke on Cameroon State Radio CRTV. Cameroon's Union of Journalists reports that two presenters of political programs on TV were also attacked by unknown men this month. Human Rights Watch said in July that it is becoming increasingly difficult to speak freely in Cameroon, adding that as elections approach, authorities should fully respect Cameroonians' freedom of expression. Moki Edwin Kinzaka, VOA News. Ethiopia on Wednesday responded angrily to Egypt's delivery of arms to Somalia, likely signaling escalated tensions between the two Horn of Africa neighbors. Addis Ababa warned that Somalia's dalliance with external forces was likely to destabilize the region, urging the changeover is fraught with danger. The statement from Addis Ababa did not mention Egypt directly, but did say the tension in Somalia from the African Union mission in Somalia Artemis to the African Union support and stabilization mission in Somalia Awesome was being conducted without regard to the region's security interests. All those responsible for preparing and authorizing a new support mission must take into account the legitimate concerns of countries of the region and the TCCs, troops contributing countries, forces trying to inframe tension for their short-term objectives must shoulder the grave ramifications. Ethiopia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said on Wednesday, Ethiopia cannot tolerate these actions that endanger the gains made against regional and international terrorist groups. Ethiopia has been a troop contributor to Artemis, but Somalia has made it clear it won't be part of awesome after the two countries deferred on the Memorandum of Understanding Addis Ababa signed with Somalia's breakaway region, Somaliland. 
Mogadishu protested bitterly, although the two sides recently met twice in Turkey for talks, they failed to resolve the issue. Egypt, which already has a dispute over a dam over the Nile with Ethiopia, has already agreed to deploy 10,000 Egyptian troops, 5,000 for the planned awesome and 5,000 to be best Hiran region bordering Ethiopia. Ethiopia and Egypt failed to agree on how to fill the dam, which Cairo urged would affect its water resources downstream. Egypt had a one time threatened to bomb the dam known as the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which it urges is a national security threat. Tension between Somalia and Ethiopia has been ongoing since January when Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and Somaliland's leader Musa Bihi Abdi signed a memorandum of understanding that granted Ethiopia a 50-year lease on a naval base with access to Somaliland's Bebera port for commercial marine operations. Somalia had made it clear that Ethiopia would not be part of Awesome, which is supposed to take over from Artemis in January 2025. On August 23rd, Somalia Prime Minister Hamza Abdibali, in, ad in an address to the press in Mogadishu, confirmed that Ethiopian forces would not be part of Awesome unless Addis Ababa withdraws from a controversial memorandum of understanding with the self-governing Somaliland, which Somalia considers as an integral part of its territory. Ethiopia has refused to withdraw the memorandum of understanding since, as a landlocked country, the deal with Somaliland would give it a long-desired access the sea after Eritrea broke away in 1993 and took the ports of Aseb and Masava with them.